Hi, I'm Greg from Zoho Expert, and today I'm going to be doing a quick video on client scripts. Uh, that's new functionality within Zoho CRM, and I just want to show you guys around. Um, anyway, before we get started, this is our YouTube channel. Um, please subscribe, please like our videos, please comment on our videos. Um, we're trying to grow the channel and we really appreciate any support. Uh, lots of great videos on our channel uh, about automatic document collection, uh, dealing with Zoho Flow and all the cool things you can do with that. Uh, we're just in the process of uploading a video on custom functions, a sort of beginner's guide to custom functions in Deluge. So strongly recommend you check that out. Um, and, and there's lots of other videos in there. So, so have a look and I'm sure you'll find something you like. Uh, anyway, on with today's video. So okay, I just had to pop across into my uh, other system because I realized that I don't have access to client scripts in my uh, Zoho Expert system. So this is my system for my property business um, and one that I've dealt, you know, been working on for, for years now. Anyway, so today's functionality is all about client scripts. Um, so if you want to get this switched on, you can contact support and ask them to switch it on for you. Um, and um, they, they should be happy to do that. Um, so here I've already made a couple of scripts, as you can see, um, and I'll just show you how these work. Um, so if we go to a uh, new person, let's go new person. And we start with typing in their postcode, for example. As we click out of it, it automatically fills in the city, the province uh, or uh, county uh, that corrects the postcode. So if you saw, I actually typed this in lowercase. Uh, and it corrected that to uppercase, which I, that's a pet peeve of mine when people write lowercase postcodes. Um, and then it also puts in the country. Um, so that's just a small little functionality. I'll show you how I've done that. Um, and I'll include the, the code in uh, the video description today. Um, but the sad news about this is that um, client scripts are only really um, available to those who are able to do JavaScript. Um, and so I'm not a great JavaScript developer myself, um, and therefore I, I, I struggle with this and I'm just kind of following tutorials and, and reading stuff online, but you might be, you know, so minded yourself and you might want to try that as well. And by all means, go ahead. Um, so let me just show you around now how the client scripts work. Um, so this is my postcode lookup one. Um, now, as you can see uh, in here, it gives you a bit of information to start with. Um, and then I've worked out that, uh, you know, value here from up here is uh, the, the value of whatever field I am dealing with. So I've said um, when the value changes and then I've said, well, the input postcode is the value that I want to work with. Um, and then I've said if the input postcode is not equal to null, so in other words, is not empty, then log this out to the to the console so I could do some testing. Um, and then once I realized that it was showing me the input postcode um, uh, in the console, I then called on this API. And this is just a free API in the UK uh, where you can look up postcodes. Um, it, it's not as good as get address. Get address is definitely the best one, but you've got to pay for that one. So uh, for, for this system, when I was just messing about, I just used this free API. Um, and then I did a uh, fetch on, on the API URL, and I just put the postcode on the end. And then when it came back, it came back as JSON. So I passed it into JSON. Um, I checked whether there were any errors, um, and then when I saw that it had this 200, which is the success message, um, then I started setting the fields. Now you can see here the zdk.page.get field, and then the field ID, and you'll recognize this from when we look at the API names in the developer console. Um, and then we go again, we go mailing city dot set value. And then we say from the JSON up here, we want to get the result and we want to get the admin district because that's what they call the mailing city. And I just did that for all the fields. Um, now, there's quite a lot that you can do with this. 
Um, so I'm just going to show you guys the help pages that uh, Zoho have helpfully have helpfully made for us. Um, so there are lots of functions. Um, some things that I am planning on implementing into my system uh, are to do with the UI. Um, so this is the user interface. And um, when you've got canvases, which is Zoho's other new thing, um, you can then highlight specific parts of the canvas and you can do, you know, interesting things with the canvas. Um, other options you have is you can make requests, um, you know, posts, gets, puts, deletes, patches. Um, these are really helpful because obviously that's how you talk to other systems. Now, in Zoho, it's always been possible to talk to other systems using workflows and custom functions and webhooks. But why this is such a um, uh, such a awesome improvement is because we don't have to save the record to to run these. So we can say, well, if somebody types in the postcode, then once they finish typing, call on this URL and and do something with that postcode. Now that's really cool. Um, you know, you could use this in so many different ways for your system. Um, for example, you could have a check your calendar and check if you've got, you know, availability. Um, uh, there's, there's loads of different things you can do. Okay, so some other things I just want to show you here. So um, these are the um, the abilities you have to to access different things. So you can get the page dot record ID, and that will get the record ID from the page you're currently working on. Um, same with the module, and same with the record. Now the record will obviously have loads of other data in it. So you can get the page dot record, and then you can get data from within the record. And that's really helpful. Um, some other things you can do is um, you can move the blueprints along. Um, so this is obviously going to be helpful for people. So say, for instance, you just have a tick box that says closed and then you don't have to walk through your whole blueprint to get to the end of it, for example. Um, you know, whatever the case may be, there's lots of different options for you here. Um, and I'm just trying to find the one thing that I thought was also going to be really useful. Um, I'm just trying to find it, but basically it's where you can make pop-ups and um, maybe it's under this UI element. Um, no. So this is where you can just basically show and hide things as, as you're going along, depending on what options you choose, um, which is definitely the best way to, to do that, by the way. Um, I'm not a fan of custom views um, inside the record uh, or custom layouts. I'm sorry, views are great, layouts are not. Um, so try to avoid the layouts wherever you can. Okay, so we've got these buttons here. Um, so for example, uh, you can you can have this function here that when a button is clicked, you want it to do something like save the record um, or you know open another record, open a pop-up window. There's literally so much you can do. Um, I'm struggling to find this section with the uh, pop-up messages that I was hoping to show you. Ah, uh, there we go. Okay, there we go. So for example, you can have show message, yeah? And you can have the message type can be info, error, warning, or success. If you've ever worked with HTML and Bootstrap, then you'll recognize these. So you've got your, uh, I think it's blue, yellow, red, and green um, default colors. Um, so now if we go back here, what I'm going to do is I'm going to say when the postcode is entered and it's not empty, then let's show a message. Let's say postcode is plus uh, input postcode and type we're going to say success okay save all right so now if we go to create a new person and we type in their postcode look i'm going to do it lowercase again just to show you how that works and there we go, you see this green message up here, postcode is, and then it's got the postcode, and it's pre-filled this information in. Um, now, one of the other options you have, which is quite nice, is having a message where you expect the user to say yes or no to something or anything really. Um, so let's edit this again, and I'll show you how that works. All right. 
So let's delete this old one. Okay, so the message is, uh, are you sure you want to use this postcode plus input postcode? And then the accept message is going to be, yes, use it. No, I'll change. Oh, I can't use that. I will change it. Okay, sorry if you can hear my dogs barking in the background. Um, okay, so I'm saving this and now we're going back to create person. I'm going to just refresh this just in case it needs a refresh. And now we are going to type in the postcode again. There we go. So it says, are you sure you want to use this postcode? Yes, use it. No, I'll change it. Now, what happens in the JavaScript when you when you click one of these options, um, it will um, it'll return false if you choose the no option and it will return true if you use the yes option. So you might then want to have a um, if statement here um, that says if um, and then what would that be called? Do, 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 do. We should just name this so it would be var. See, I'm not a, um, a, a, a JavaScript programmer because they would tell you you should use constant or const uh, equals um, do, 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 const uh, question response equals. And then if we take this question response, so basically what comes back from here will be filled into this question response. And then we're going to say if that uh, equals 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 uh, true, then uh, let's give them another message. Um, here we'll say, okay, use that postcode. And we'll make this a success message because they've said yes. And then we can also say else. So in other words, if it comes back false, we want to say, uh, okay, change that postcode. And we'll make this uh, danger because they've said no. Now, in this case, you can also um, say input postcode uh, dot set value and then we just want to say null and that will clear the postcode for us um, now this is obviously going to be beyond some people who aren't uh, programmers um, but uh, I am just showing you what's available and there is, you know, so many resources out there, or there are so many resources out there that you can learn from. Um, that's how I've learned most of what I know. Um, so I highly recommend checking uh, checking some resources out online, reading the help guides from uh, Zoho, and taking it from there. Um, I'm just going to show you how this works now. So we put in the postcode. It says, "Are you sure?" If we say yes, then it says, "Okay, use that postcode." Yeah. And if we do it again. And we say no this is okay change that postcode although it's only blue i wonder why i thought i said uh i thought i said to make it danger anyway i better go now because um, my colleagues will be getting into work and uh, they'll be wondering why they get the why they're getting these weird uh pop-up messages every time they type in a postcode uh <laughs> so um i'm gonna put everything back to the way it was and um, if you've got any questions on client scripts, let me know. But honestly, there is just so much you can do with it. I haven't even scratched the surface. Um, I haven't had the time to go through this personally myself to work out what's going to work for my system and what, what's not. Um, but sometimes just knowing that something exists is enough because when you come across a problem in the future and you think to yourself, oh, how can I sort this out? you might think back to this client script and be like, yes, there might be an option in client scripts. So um, it's always handy to learn about these things, even if you're not going to use them. 
Um, if you need any help with anything, leave a comment. Uh, and if you have any video requests, please leave a comment and we'd be happy to help. Thanks a lot.